Okay, so if we're waiting, so welcome everyone to I'm Hayato and uh, also AWS Specialist Solution Architect and of the uh, in-memory specialist and uh, NoSQL databases. So today I'm excited to the, uh, present the Bauki, so totally open source the key value data store built by the community and for the community. So as uh, open source advocate and uh, practitioners, you will be uh, particularly interested to know that uh, Bulky was created with the strong open source uh, principles. And it's cool. So it's a BSD3 license and uh, vendor neutral and uh, developed uh, entirely in open. So throughout uh, this presentation, we will explore the how Baroque maintains the full REST OSS compatibility and uh, while the fostering the sustainable the community-driven development uh, model as uh, this, so Linux Foundation's governance. We have also the demonstrations uh, how major uh, industry players are already supporting this collaborative open source effort and uh, showing the enterprise grade software can strive under the, this open source uh, principles. Okay, let's start. So let me provide the important context about the bulky formations, uh, so this timeline. So this timeline shows the uh, uh, key events of the 2024 that shaped our project on March 20th, so let's announce a significant change to the licensing model. So this created the uncertainty in the open source community about in the future of this critical infrastructures. In response, so we, the bulky chain, so established the bulky community on March 28th, the rapid, very rapid move mobilizations to ensure the truly open source alternative would remain available. The community's response was remarkable by the April, so 16th, so 16th, just, well, just uh, uh, two or three weeks after the formations, we released the bulk is 7.2 and uh, well, we, with the uh, full Redis OSS compatibilities. This quick turnaround uh, demonstrates not just the uh, uh, technical capabilities of, the, of the, our community, but uh, so also it's a commitment to the preserve the open source infrastructures. And the last, so the September the 16th, we reached another milestone with uh, Baroque 8.0. The bringing major improvement while the, uh, so, maintain our commitment to the open source. This timeline shows uh, how the open source community can effectively respond to the challenges of advanced technologies. And these uh, three principles, three fundamental principles that define the bulkies. First is uh, so our fully compatibility with the REST OSS was 7.2. So this means you can translate to Baroque without modifying your existing applications or workflows. So you can, your current core tools and uh, so workflows and uh, so practices will continue to work as they do today. So second, the uh, vendor is uh, completely the uh, vendor neutral so under BSD3 license. So this means uh, no single company controls so the, this project directions and our permissive license gives users and the developers the freedoms they need while, they need while providing the clear legal protections. So the BSD3 license allows the host both commercial and non-commercial use, so while maintaining the open source nature of the project. The last one, third, is uh, so built by the contributors in the open source communities. So our technical decision, the roadmaps, uh, shaped the, so collaboratively 
by the developers, so who understand the real world use case or real world needs of the infrastructures or softwares. This ensures the, the project the, serves the broadly technology ecosystem so the transparent and the collaborative development. On the days, three pillars, so for the alternate, alternative of the Redis or Redis compatibilities, so the vendor neutral licensing and the community driven development for these three pillars, so from the, from the foundation that address the key concerns many of you have expressed about the sustainability and the governance of the critical infrastructure softwares. And uh, so this number, uh, just a number, but uh, <laughs> so on this slide tells uh, so comparing story about the rapid growth and the strong momentum of the Balki project. You know, with uh, over 40 corporate uh, supporters, so includes uh, industry leaders, so we've established the robust ecosystems that ensure the uh, projects are so long term, long term sustainability, and uh, so without the uh, compromising the uh, vendor neutral approach. And uh, our technical committee is. Uh, so particularly impressive with uh, so 80, over 80, 86, 86 uh, code contributors for the main, the core bulky code. And the uh, additional uh, over 80, uh, sorry, 50, 50 contributors about uh, developing the client and the supporting tools, libraries. And uh, so this shows uh, over the 50, uh, sorry, 500, so, but, uh, uh, so now, it may reach or over to the 1,000. So 1,000 code comments uh, since the launch. So demonstrates the uh, incredible velocity of the, our communities. So these metrics, so that's uh, just a number, but uh, uh, it represents, represents the dedication of the so individual developers and the uh, trust of the corporations and the uh, power of the collaborations, collaborative with the open source development. So most importantly, this level of engagement that shows that the open source community has so embraced Balki as a crucial project. Okay. So there's a rogue wall. So the, this rogue presents uh, some leading so technology company supporting Balkis. So the diversity, you can see the many roles. So the diversity is a significant. We have the cloud provider and the, so enterprise software company and the, so security specialist and also the infrastructure leaders. So each bringing the unique expertise to the, so our project. So while so we're proud of the, this corporate uh, backing, so I want to emphasize uh, so that uh, no single company so has a special privilege or control over the, this project. So as, a, as, a, as I said, uh, vendor neutral. So, so these organizations uh, actively uh, contributing code, resources, and uh, so expertise so with our open governance model, ensuring that they even contribute to the align with committee needs. So and uh, now let me introduce uh, one more so bulky glide. Glide means uh, sorry I sometimes forgot <laughs> this meaning. So general language, so independent driver for the enterprise. Uh, glide. Yes. So this is a critical piece of the inf infrastructure that makes it more easier for the developer to the connect their applications to Baroque or Redis OSS compatibility services. So what makes Gride, this Gride uh, particularly powerful at foundation is the Rust, providing the robust core drivers framework that then the extended supports the multiple another languages. So now support, we are currently supporting Java and Python and Node.js. 
with uh, more language plans. So Bulky was designed with the enterprise requirement in mind. So it is optimized for the so reliability and the performance and the high availability and also the so, so the observations. So I wanted to highlight the so Grid is the, the new so one of the, our so public clients. So and the, so in addition, is a uh, uh, so man, man, maintains uh, compatibility with both so uh, bulky 7.2 and uh, also the rest OSS version 6.2 and 7.0 and 7.2. So making it uh, future proof to uh, your applications. Okay. Okay, that's a brief history in the remarks and. Uh, and now, the, so let's dive into the Baroque 8.0, our latest major release. So this version uh, represents a significant leap, leap forward in terms of the performance and uh, efficiency and uh, reliability. I walk you through the key improvements, and uh, not also, but uh, just uh, several improvements, uh, and uh, show you why this release is uh, generating so much so the excitement in the community. Okay, so bulky key features. So the bulky 8.0 so derives so improvements across the six critical areas. So performance and efficiency and the, so reliability. So includes the replication the observations. So finally, it is dramatically performance gains uh, up with up to the two, 230% <laughs> significant improvement. So, and uh, also the 70% uh, reduced latency. It is uh, compared with the uh, bulky 7.2. The memory efficiency has been uh, enhanced with uh, up to the 20%, 20% reductions in overhead. So we have straight, Strength and uh, reliability is uh, also the, these like the so new features. And uh, so the, let's start the understanding the, the key improvement. So the understanding the evolution of the, our threading architectures. So this diagram is the old ones. So this this diagram is uh, so Redis OSS. Maybe 8.x, I think. So 8.x, uh, 8.0. So this is a very basic architecture, the single thread model. So the so feature is our best line for the comparison in this model. So we have a single threaded approach for all operations. So the, from IO handling, the command execution or processing the sequentially. The sequentially is a very good. So designs for the especially the serializability. So, but uh, so with designs are simple and works well for the basic usage. But uh, it has so it has a clear limitations for the so modern hardware utilizing a scaling. So this understanding of the original architecture is uh, crucial. So because it helps demonstrate the, so the improvements that we made in the bulk eight itself. So here, we see the we can see the bulky. This is 7.2 architectures, so which represented represented the, our first step toward improved multi threading. In this model, so we implement the uh, parallel I/O processing. You can see the here this column is the so parallel I/O threading. So with uh, multiple threads, and so which was uh, so improvement over the single threaded model. So, however, however, the, so you can see the this this vacation. So this image vacations. So this uh, this IO thread is uh, so while the system could. 
because the processing I/O request in parallel, so all that had the synchronized before the main threads that could execute commands. So in other words, the I/O threads would be so effectively go on the vacations while waiting the main threads are complete. So this implementation was far simpler and safer than the so fully parallel execution and uh, but the, so had limited the very scaling benefit. So we knew that we could do better the, the led us to the completely redesign the this architecture in the uh, bulk atom itself. So let me show the next slide. So this diagram shows the first step. So the first major architecture improvements uh, in bulk at for itself. So the key innovation has uh, so a completely rewritten the IO threading. This is a, oh, this is something changed. So and uh, unlike the bulk 7.2 the architectures, so this IO thread so can now the operate the independent without the, uh, recurring the synchronization with the main thread. And this fundamental shift from the uh, previous design was the threads. Uh, so the main thread act as an orchestrator. So dynamically uh, assigns a job to the IO thread. So this laser is that you can see. So that. And uh, so. So this architecture is uh, for the optimal for the performance, so especially for the scalable scalability. So this architecture changes uh, results in the almost uh, doubling our max throughput, while the maintaining the so integrity of our code and uh, command execution execution systems. So and then, so there's uh, another improvement for the work is. So, so building the, uh, I, the one, we had a few enhancements uh, about eight point zero performance with uh, additional additional optimization. So showing the, this diagram. So we expanded the responsibility of the IO thread. So which now handles the system polling events, the, and uh, also the it will take the uh, query passing. So I'll, I'll back the one page, just one page. So this is a difference of the, these two, the, the new architectures. So more, most significantly is that we introduced the so sophisticated prefetch mechanism. So we need the prefetch. So look at the, how the main thread now the includes the prefetch stage. So this allows us to the pull data from the so multiple command into the so the cache. So CPU the L1 cache before the executions. So be, this prefetching is a particularly is a very powerful because uh, we can prepare the data file I/O threading as a processing their own task. So and then make optimal use of the modern hardware capabilities. So combined with our so asynchronous I/O architectures. So the next slide. So these enhancements are delivered the so significant performance improvements. So the final is uh, this is two hundred thirty percent. So up the two hundred. So it means uh, become triple. So compare with the same point two. So finally, is, uh, we have something so benchmark. So there is a concrete results uh, of the architecture improvements. So that speak it's uh, itself. So we can see nearly so kind of the two point five percent, two point five times. So improvements the total throughput and uh, so maintains uh, or even reducing latencies. So this uh, and just the uh, incremental gains uh, represents uh, fundamental advance in the performance capabilities. 
the what's the particular exciting about that? Uh, so this uh, so our open source for Pro community has uh, already uh, identified the several additional more additional opportunities for the performance optimizations, and uh, we have um, so multiple improvement planned in the future release. This is just for the 8.0. And uh, this is uh, so one small improvement of the, so let's shift the, so our focus on the another so fundamental improvement in the bulky iPhone 12. So memory efficiencies. So the DRAM is uh, one of the most expensive components in the database deployments. So, so every byte counts. While we previously, the, so performance improvement helps the throughput bound users, but uh, this memory optimization is a target the storage, the memory, so it means the memory. So the storage bound the scenarios. So we identified that, that so traditional hash table, so you can see the, you can see the dislike, so you can see the dislike, uh, so component in the every so programming language, so, the hash table implementation was uh, uh, causing the unnecessary memory overhead. So particularly with the small keys. So I will show you the, uh, well, we've addressed. So, so this sort in so innovation technologies like keys embedding. So embed, we showed the embedding keys. So which are on the save the only eight bytes per entry on the hardware, but uh, look like the specifics of these optimizations. And uh, so this diagram also shows the memory allocation model in the previous versions. So this is the right side, so before, not the forward side. So let me highlight the, so some uh, inefficiency in the old bulky clusters. So we are using the 16 bytes just a 16 byte, so for so part key, so, so just to track the slot, where's the slot, slot assignment. So that's the sharding information needed for the cluster operation like scaling and, uh, while the approach works. So it created the so significant overhead, so especially at scale. So these before pictures, so help us understand why we need the so fundamental redesigns and memory exchanges. So, and this after, so there is something important so about the dictionary change. So you can see the, so this is, uh, you can see the, understand easy this, this, so before times it started pointers, but uh, so there's uh, something the waste of the so 16 bytes, 16 byte per keys. So and, uh, we can change to the actual dynagram. Oh, last 10 minutes, okay. So in the result, here's a uh, uh, so optimized memory model in the bulky 8.0. So by implementing the separate hash table and uh, so introducing key embedding, so finally you can see that there's like 20% so memory improved the memory efficiencies. So we've achieved the, so 20% is uh, something that so remarkable so in the memory saving, so it is because the memory is uh, expensive. So in our testing there was that uh, so typical workload using the 16 bytes, keys, and the values, so size is very common in the caching scenarios. So we observed the, so the 20% reductions in total memory usage. So notice that uh, so this is uh, how the reduction is per, per key, so overhead has been significantly reduced compared to the previous slide. So final, so final, uh, now let's talk about the, uh, one of the most practical considerations for the many of users. So how to migrate from the Redis to Bulky. So migration can often be complex and a risky process, you know, so, but we have put the significant effort in the making this a transition as smooth as possible. 
Over the next few slides, uh, I'll walk you through with uh, compatibility, compatibility guarantees and uh, various migration strategies. Okay, this is the thing. So let me emphasize just how seamless migrate from the Redis OSS to Baroque can be. Ah, Redis OSS, so my, 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 in my town, so Redis OSS means uh, Redis 10.2.3. Ah, sorry, 2.4, the latest, the last version of the uh, latest has the OSS license. So the, since the bulky based on the same source, so it is fork, so the source trades the latest OSS, so we maintain the perfect compatibility with uh, across the all key components and uh, so configurations, uh, APIs, the uh, command and the uh, uh, sub protocols and uh, also the client library is uh, exact, exactly the same. So in this uh, bulky 7.2.5, so the, the very the first version of the bulky is uh, just a rebrand. So rebrand means a change the, the name of the uh, Redis change the bulky. So just a rebrand. So so it means uh, so you are existing application using Redis will work with uh, Baroque, so without any modifications. And uh, also the client library is uh, continue to work exactly before, as before. So now, so according to the, this uh, uh, compatibilities, uh, so we can introduce, so the, there's uh, multiple strategies and uh, I recommend the one uh, strategies. So this is one. So loading, uh, loading update. So this means uh, so you can you can simply spin up new bulky cache and uh, do loading update to move your application to pull so data from bulky. As same as uh, so major version of the Redis Redis versions. So if you are using the more so durable workloads. So you can use uh, uh, either of the built in the replication mechanisms. So it means uh, using a backup arrest uh, or using the third party tooling, like so Redis Share or uh, Riot in old. So but uh, I want to say the, so there's a, so perfect compatibility is. So under, so this is the future of the bulky. So, and so in so additional information. So also the bulky 8.0 is uh, keeping the compatibility perfect compatibility with the 7.2. So it, it means that uh, you can easily uh, migrate the the latest 7.2 from to the bulky 8.0. So on the day, the future of the bulky. So again, so there's uh, something the exciting roadmap for the bulky is that if the both communities uh, needs uh, so under modern database requirements. So you can see the something that uh, so the native JSON type or uh, Bloom filter type. So and the uh, back then the full text search capabilities and uh, so some improvement for the uh, performance and observabilities. So you can see the old roadmap or uh, uh, issues or discussions that in, you can check in the GitHub or Bulky IO's blog. So we invite you to the become the part of the Bulky communities. Uh, so there's uh, several ways to get started. So visit Bulky IO to read the community blog or learn about the project in depth. So and or so if you want to the try to so Bulky is a quick test way to the pull the our official container from the, so, for the Docker Hub. So, and uh, if you want to the interest and contribute the more deep dive, so you can see the all, so discussions is uh, so in GitHub, so it is because open. So let me conclude with a few testimonials from the, our corporate supporters. So this endorsement from the industry leaders uh, demonstrates uh, the broad ecosystem support for bulkies. 
So what's uh, so particular meaningful is that uh, highlights the three case aspect of the uh, project. So our commitment to the true open source government and uh, sustainability is developed under the Linux foundations and the focus on the so security and the reliability. So these aren't the just word of support. They represent concrete the activities are contributing the building upon bulky. Okay. So the last two minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, you can uh, please uh, take a survey. So I hope that this session has uh, gives you the clear, more clear pictures uh, uh, how Baroque is advanced open source key value storage technologies. So before you leave, uh, uh, please, so we do the greatly appreciate the, uh, your feedback, the, the session survey. So these are just one required question. So it takes uh, only one single click, please. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any questions? Um, about like the embedding keys into the entry in order to save memory, I didn't really understand how that worked. Does, it, ah, does that mean that each entry is now variable length? So you mean the... The foo bar baz, yeah, it's like this, yeah. This one. So, in the old architecture, so just one minute, so in, the, in this old architecture has uh, so printers for the, the key name, the who. So, but uh, it is with uh, so some very small 8-byte eight, eight memory. So, the new architecture is just uh, the, this uh, name of the name of the values, keys into the, the pointers positions. So the, is the dictionary entry now variable length depending on whether you have foo or like a four character word or a five character word? Ah, uh, sorry, wait. Uh, so uh, right now you have foo, which is three bytes. Uh, yeah. If you have a longer word, the entry would get longer. Like does that mean every entry is now variable length? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so, so it is depends on the uh, length. So, so, but, uh, so uh, <laughs> so you can see the uh, bulky blog. Uh, so you can see the so in the bulky I was uh, about the blog of the, this uh, performance improvement. So it is uh, explains the de more detail. So the, this improvement. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much.